Hey guys, what's going on? Um, I've had a lot of PMs on Facebook and a lot of emails asking about how the aquaponics system is actually set up. Uh, I'm going to try to give you a quick run through here. It is going to be in depth, so you've, you're pre-warned right now that I'm going to get into some pretty dorky stuff. Um, but I want to show you guys how it's actually set up um, so you can see the details and whatnot of the setup because a lot of people know how it works in general but they don't really understand the little things that really make one of these work so I'm going to try to run you through that right now sorry for the quality of the video classic iPhone stuff um, this was built out of two IBC totes so your first tote right down there that's actually this entire system is made of two totes so one you have here I cut the top uh, quarter off of this tote flipped it upside down and laid it on top of this to create one. I took a second tote, cut that one, and cut that one off the top and bottom, flipped them upside down, and made the tote. You guys can look around YouTube and see uh, IBC aquaponics, and uh, there's a lot of information on how these are set up. This is a three bed setup. I don't recommend this for your first setup. I recommend going with uh, the one fish base and then uh, one grow bed to start and then you can implement the two after that. Um, three has been a little difficult starting off, um, and I'll explain that here in a sec. Anyway, this is the fish tank. We don't have any fish just yet. Those are coming in about three or four days. Um, this system has to stage over the course of a couple of weeks. That means it has to cycle and run, and um, what we have in the grow beds is a media of pumice stone here, and lava rock and the reason we ha are staging it is uh, this water will run through and basically create all the bacteria that is required for the plants to grow so the bacteria are it's not the food per se but they make the food so the fish waste creates a ton of ammonia the ammonia comes into the system the bacteria live in these nice little cracks and uh, all these cool little things in the stones and that's why we use such things like lava rock and pumice and what they do they convert that ammonia to nitrites and then there's another bacteria that converts them to nitrates and that is the superfood for the plants so that has to create uh, I mean yes to stay just for a little while in order for it to get ready to plant and that's basically what we're doing right now so in staging our system, we have to have a source of ammonia in order for the bacteria to start growing in our grow beds. Without the fish, we're not going to get um, any ammonia in these. So we have to put ammonia in ourselves, and that pretty much has to come from me. Yeah, I peed in it. But it's a standard thing to do when you're staging your um, system. Uh, you know, hey. Just use a little bit of urine, it's high in ammonia, and gets this thing kick-started. And once it's kick-started, it'll start filtering, it'll start growing, and you can put your fish in there and rock and roll. And then we uh, fix all the pH problems and all the acidity problems for the fish to come in. So a little bit about the stone. Uh, we use pumice because it has a high surface area. That means that there's a lot of holes and all types of fun little things going on in this stone that creates more surface area for the bacteria to grow on. And a bacteria can hide in, in every little uh, nook and cranny. And Plus it's a very light stone, it's easy to work with and whatnot. But the only problem with pumice is that it floats. So if you fill up your bed or something goes wrong and this whole thing floats, well it's gonna drown a lot of your plants, your plants gonna end up under the rocks, blah, blah, blah. So we, uh, I put a layer of um, black lava rock it's a small lava cinder and both of these are imported from Mexico so the cinder uh, lays on top of the pumice to keep it held down plus again um, lava is fantastic for all those little holes and everything for the bacteria to grow um, another thing it does is keep the water from wicking out of the grow beds yeah this is summer guys and it's gonna get really hot out here so we need to keep the water in the grow beds and um, this pumice almost acts like a sponge. It'll pull water from the very base of this thing all the way to the top, which in turn the sun will grab it and obviously rip it out of there. This uh, lava rock doesn't do that. It doesn't wick as much as the pumice stone does, so we put this on top 
um, because it doesn't it basically stops the wicking process so to speak um, so to run through the components uh, this is a powered system on solar so we have uh, 50 watt and a 20 watt solar panel powering a deep cycle marine battery here uh, there is a charge controller hooked up to it so we make sure the solar panel doesn't overcharge the battery and make it explode on us that's no fun and then the timer here is hooked up uh, to our pump which you will see right back there you see those everything's kind of ghetto right now I haven't wired everything in because it's still in testing uh, but you get the idea and then there's that black hose running up down the back there which is sucking the fish water out of the system and coming into this drum and this is a swirl filter and if anybody wants me to post videos uh, in depth on how swirl filters work and whatnot I can but if you just google swirl filter or aquaponics swirl filter or vortex filter uh, you can find that stuff on YouTube uh, and there's a lot of people a lot smarter than me doing this so if you're interested in building one of those definitely go to these guys because I've uh, I've done what works for me and if I've learned anything you really have to figure out what works for you I have kind of a slope and a grade here on the ground which creates a lot of drainage issues and a uh, bun bunch of little things just if you want to build your own definitely learn from people who've done it longer than I have uh, but this is the hose right here that you can see running along the back that goes into the fish tank so the water runs through this up the side of the tank here and I will open this cover to keep, and this covers here to keep leaves out and whatnot um, but the water comes right in and you can see how it uh, pushes the water to the side and creates a swirling motion and all of the waste and whatnot will fall down to the bottom of this drum and then we can collect that fish waste through this little spigot pipe that I've set up. And then all that fish waste is supercharged fertilizer and we can throw that directly on the garden beds behind us. But a lot of the ammonia is still in the water and that will be collected through this pipe right here. All the water skims off the top, goes down the pipe and down into the uh, watering troughs or the uh, water line. And there's a bunch of little holes cut in each one of these. And then I have them sectioned off with a valve because um, if you're doing a gravity drain like this, especially across three beds, you're going to have to um, really weigh out your water drainage to make sure these all fill up and drain exactly the same time. That's why if you notice down here where these guys are draining, uh, there's a valve there, there's a valve there, and of course you see a valve there. Um, to regulate the drainage and you want to regulate the uh, water flow as well. So you get how this is draining. And right now we have romaine lettuce growing in the front row and corn growing in the back row. This is a hybrid sweet corn. This is just your standard romaine lettuce. Both of these are rather hardy, so they can put up with a lot of damage and it's a good plant to try to have. A, you can harvest some stuff um, and actually eat out of your garden that you're working so hard for. Uh, plus it's pretty hardy so you can get your system locked in before you try any other um, uh, any other vegetables or whatnot. And then just for giggles I put some radishes in front to see how those will go and they're doing rather well. As you can see everything's getting pretty soupy. See it's filling up with water quite a bit. We're kind of pooling here. Um, that's usually when it's time to stop. And what this is is a uh, piece of plastic to keep all the uh, rocks out and whatnot. In the media out and this is just a uh, cover again to keep more junk out of the pipe but you might be able to see the pipe down there you might not but that drains directly into the fish tank so once all the plants have done their filtering and whatnot this cleaner water goes down into the fish tank for the fish to eat or excuse me fish to live in and I'm gonna turn this off right now Okay. And that's about it. If you have any questions, uh, give me a PM or a email at jasonbrumb at gmail.com. I'll post it here on the video. Anyway, I'll send more updates on what we're doing with this and how it's coming along, the progress, and if we have any major failures and how we fix them. 